If you've ever been on TikTok, like ever, it is very likely that you've come across videos like this one. Or like this. Or TikToks that use sounds like this. Well, all of these very odd videos are the product of the Jaffe TikTok meme empire. With over 5 billion views on TikTok, Jaffe has become unavoidable on the app and has gradually snowballed into an almost surrealist meme entity involving fabricated countries, mythical wars, and many, many cases of identity theft. Introducing an extensive, like half hour long extensive, deep dive into the weird and wild TikTok world of Jaffe to discover the meme's origins, untangle its bizarre TikTok virality, and decode all the sub-communities that the un Canny Valley Queen has birthed. In early 2021, TikTok users began to notice an influx of bot accounts on the app that were liking their comments. The profile pictures of these accounts were predominantly Asian women and would randomly mass like comments on the app, filling people's notifications with a flurry of bot accounts all similarly named. As people grew more and more suspicious of these accounts, it became theorised that these accounts were engaging with random TikTok users in an attempt to bait people into visiting their profile and clicking on the link in their bio, which would then track the person's IP address. This led to many people issuing public service announcements warning people about these bot accounts and their alleged IP tracking abilities, with the theory having snowballed into the accounts were using IP addresses to locate people to then kidnap them. These PSAs were also helpfully placed in front of a video of Charlie D'Amelio dancing, you know, just to emphasise the gravity of the kidnapping situation. I obviously couldn't find any evidence of any actual kidnappings via these bot accounts and it's kind of giving the man in talking Angela's eye, so moving on. Many of these bot accounts that were liking the comments had the same profile picture of a Chinese woman tilting her head and smiling a little too creepily into the camera, perhaps a selfie. And many of these accounts also shared the same username, followed by a string of random numbers. That name was Jaffe, and this picture would soon become known as Jaffe, the face that launched a thousand FlopTok accounts. A little later in May 2021, there was an influx of posts on TikTok from similar bot accounts, but these were posting videos of random people using random household products like shoe covers, cleaning products, mini irons, etc. These videos advertising the products were extremely odd and often extremely dramatic. The video creators also would include little random shocking easter eggs put in the video but never addressed, intended to make people comment things like OMG a mouse to boost the engagement of the video so that the video is pushed further in the TikTok algorithm, in the same sort of vein as 5 Minute Crafts this whole channel. The bot accounts posting these product videos allegedly came from Douyin, which is TikTok's Chinese counterpart, and they encouraged users to click the link in their bio to buy the products that they advertised in these videos. Due to the sheer number of these bot accounts, they became very well known to TikTok users before they were eventually banned from the app, presumably as they were all just mass posting the same content. Or perhaps because they were actually stealing people's IP addresses. Who knows? Either way, TikTok got rid of them. But despite the removal of the Jaffe bot accounts and the household product accounts, Jaffe was only just beginning. As more and more people began to notice both sets of bot accounts and the absurdity of these product videos that they posted, some human TikTok users combined the two, creating fake Jaffe bot accounts of their own, and parodied the product advertising accounts by posting the strange product videos, but with preposterous captions exaggerating the already absurd nature of the bot videos. Dumb clearly doesn't know how to clean anything, but this product link in my bio. These parody accounts were set up like the original accounts and also encouraged people to click the link in their bio. Click link bio. 
but product for benefit. And as you can see, most of these accounts adopted a fragmented or disjointed style to their sentences, frequently missing out words in an attempt to emulate what a non-native English speaker may sound like when speaking English. This is something I go into a little bit later in the video, but I wanted to mention it here just so you know I'm not ignoring it. As the meme grew in popularity, these parody JFA accounts began to describe the products in the videos that they were pretending to sell as s**ing, sexy products. New sexy product, 100% verified by Nicki Minaj. B can't be on the phone while driving, buy this sexy product to be able to. The use of sexy to describe mundane household products is also an imitation of the slightly muddled English used in the Chinese product adverts. This then snowballed to the parody accounts talking about, uh, bodily fluids and incorporating these into the adverts. B using too much c use this product to solve. I don't even know how much of that I'm going to have to bleep. Probably not enough either way. And although the Jaffe parody accounts were created shortly after the bots began popping up on the app in May 2021, the Jaffe meme didn't really gain much popularity until around December 2021, with Jaffe being referred to as a queen and gaining a cult following. As the Jaffe meme began to take off on TikTok, some of the accounts began to threaten that if you did not buy Jaffe's products, she would kidnap you. This is birthed from the theories, and I do use that term loosely, that surrounded the actual bot accounts where if you clicked the link in their bio, your IP address would be tracked and you would be kidnapped. Remember the Charlie D'Amelio Amber Alert? Like with the s products part of the meme, the kidnapping aspect of the joke spiralled into the idea that when Jaffe kidnaps people for not buying her products, she takes them to a haunted house. This part of the meme was created around the time that a link to an extremely disturbing video involving a haunted house was being shared on TikTok, and so Jaffe meme composers thought it was a suitable disturbing enough location for Jaffe to take her fake victims to. Day one trying to escape Jaffe's haunted house. By this product to get easy access to the haunted house, and one user did attempt to pitch to Netflix a horror movie about Jaffe's allegedly haunted abode, which I think is pretty unlikely to be picked up anytime soon, but everyone is currently on strike so who knows. As with many of the parody videos encapsulating similar topics such as kidnapping and haunted houses, the parody Jaffe videos were often plagued with the same sounds, one in particular being this the sound of a woman screaming. This scream has become synonymous with the Jaffe meme and is often edited and warped in the meme videos in some way. Regarding this particular sound, <coughs> thousands of videos have been made using it, many gaining several millions of likes and views. The scream, <coughs> is TikTok famous. But where did it come from? Well, the now prestigious scream originates from one of the bot product advertising videos that is advertising a face guard for use while cooking to protect from oil splashes. And at the start of the video, in order to justify the product's existence, we are shown a clip of a woman attempting to cook with an umbrella in front of her to protect herself from such splashes. And I'm not sure how much of the next part I can show you, because it's extremely dangerous, but when the woman in the video places the food into the pan, the kitchen becomes engulfed in flames and the woman flees from the inferno plastic umbrella in tow. This video was re-uploaded by one TikTok user and the clip gained over 100,000 likes and the comments were quick to pick apart the logic of the face mask. Bestie, I don't think it helps the fire. I don't think that is going to reduce the rate of fire coming from the pan. So the mask prevents the fire? No, without the mask it will become oil on your face. The owner knows more than I do. And other commenters flagged their concerns about the woman who was almost set ablaze in the name of advertising a kitchen face mask. That scream <coughs> sounded a little too genuine. The woman's scream from the video has become a staple in the Jaffe TikTok community and also features in the Jaffe memes more musical ventures. In a lot of these videos that the bot Jaffe accounts posted, they used the same song in the background. <laughs> This song began to make its way into the Jaffe memes when people were posting videos mimicking the style of the product advertisement videos and is now used in just general Jaffe memes and has become synonymous with Jaffe with many people branding it Jaffe's song. However, the song is in fact not written, sung, mixed or produced by Jaffe because she doesn't exist. In the real world, the song is called Ye Hua Zhang or Scent of Wildflowers from the Chinese singers Mo Si Man and Rock Cat 
and the song was released in July of 2019. The song was later remixed by DJ He Peng to create the version of the song that you most commonly hear on Jafe TikTok. Following its release, the song gained popularity on Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, which is likely why it appeared on the bot account product advertising videos, as they would have just been applying a popular sound from Douyin before they then re-uploaded them to TikTok. Because of the song being so closely associated with Jaffe, people often share videos of Mosi Man singing the scent of Wildflower's song, claiming that the video shows Jaffe singing her song. <laughs> Several clips of Mossy Man performing her song live that were then shared to TikTok claim that it is Jaffe singing on her world tour. Although some TikToks like this do acknowledge that it is Mossy Man in the videos, they often say aka Jaffe, suggesting that the pair are the same person, which is not true because once again Jaffe is not a real person. Queen Jaffe aka Mossy Man promoting Jaffe album and world tours 2023 to 2024, and even on YouTube videos where Mossy Man represented China at the ABU TV Song Festival, which is kind of like Eurovision, there are several comments referring to her as the voice of Jaffe, or just Jaffe. TikTok accounts soon began to create remixes of the Wildflowers song, calling them Jaffe remixes. The remixes were similar to the cupcake remix trend where users would take a popular song and Jaffe it up by taking the instrumental version of the popular song and then the isolated vocals of the scent of Wildflowers song before merging them together, often editing the vocals to match the pitch and tempo of the new song. And these remixes began to gain popularity in October of 2021. According to some TikTok users, one of the first Jaffe remixes to be made was of the K-pop song Lilac by AAU. I know I just absolutely butchered that. And another early remix was of the song Soap by Melanie Martinez. However, the earliest Jaffe remix I could find was posted on the 10th of July 2021 by the account Jaffe7, which was one of the first Jaffe parody accounts to be created. The remix was just of the Wildflowers song, but it was in the style of Friday Night Funkin', which for all you oldies out there, me, I'm the oldie, is a rhythm dance mat guitar hero type of game. <laughs> And this was where it all began. As the remixes slowly descended into the sort of ear chaos we are likely to hear on the app today, remixers began to create remixes that contained the Jaffe scream, as well as other songs and phrases from other notable people, while crediting them as if they were featured on the song. People such as Cupcake, Rainy Rodriguez, and Kaya, the lady who sang My Neck My Back. For these remixes that included multiple different artists, memes, or just general noises, people frequently created colour-coded lyric videos for them. Colour-coded lyric videos are videos that display the lyrics to popular songs, but colour-code and highlight which member of a group or which person in a collaboration is singing the lyrics that are on screen. These types of videos are extremely common in the K-pop space, although are becoming more common with Western artists as well. The Jaffe colour-coded lyric videos have also made their way over onto Douyin and have managed to gain a small yet impressive following. Some of the Jaffe remixes uploaded to YouTube have been given official music videos, where the music video of the original song that is being parodied is taken and Jaffe's face is edited onto the original artist's face, almost like a deep fake to create a Jaffe music video. These feigned attempts to create a realistic K-pop career for Jaffe also received comments from Jaffe stands as if the music video was in fact Jaffe's. Queen Jaffe ate and left no crumbs, world's number one idol. OMG a comeback, here's our goals, 1 billion views in 0.2 seconds, 100 million likes in 5 and 10 awards, Jaffe fighting. And one person has flipped the entire concept of a Jaffe remix on its head by creating an Ariana Grande remix of the Jaffe song through the power of AI. <laughs> which has over half a million views on YouTube. Since the Jaffe remixes first began being made, there have been a few remixes that have broken out of the Jaffe meme TikTok bubble and have gained popularity amongst locals, regular people. A Jaffe remix of the Ariana Grande song In My Head became a popular sound on the app and was often used on videos showing things flying away or disappearing. <laughs> 
and many of these videos have gained millions of likes and views. Another popular remix was of Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid. This remix was created by the account Fab S. Tarden and gained over 6 million views when originally shared. As with the In My Head remix, the Part of Your World remix has become a popular sound and as of recording has been used on 21,000 videos on the app. And for anybody who works in Lady Gaga metrics like I do, that's about half the amount of videos that Bloody Mary has been used on, which was absolutely everywhere on the app. The Jarfay song and its many remixes is probably the most famous and widespread aspect of the meme, and since its creation, the hashtag Jarfay remix on TikTok has gained over 350 million views and remained to be extremely popular on the app. And with her song's virality on TikTok, the question is raised as to whether Morsi Man is aware of the Jarfay connections that had been artificially created between her song and the meme. Well, according to some people on TikTok, there was a TikTok where someone attended a Morsi Man concert and told her about all of the Jaffe remixes of her song and this person claimed that Morsi Man laughed about them and said she wanted to do an international tour. However, I was unable to find that video so take that with a pinch of salt. And although Morsi Man is frequently accused of being Jaffe on the app, she isn't the only person who has become the embodiment of Jaffe. <laughs> In some of the Jaffe TikToks I have shown in this video, you may have noticed that a lot of them contain this woman here. This woman, lovingly referred to online by some as Skinny Girl Walking Sideways, frequently appears in many Jaffe memes. But who is she? Well, in October of 2021, a TikTok account called MNMNOOXX00 began to gain popularity on the app. The account was of a woman called Jay Momo, who mainly posted videos of herself, well, just sort of walking around, really. Several of these videos began to gain attention when she would turn sideways while walking, as if to squeeze between people or a building, despite the fact that she was incredibly skinny, and the obstacles were in no way going to hit her if she had just carried on walking normally. Because of this, many users stitched the account with videos of them parodying her walking sideways between gaps that were large enough for them to normally walk through, and these parodies gained millions of views and this soon became a trend on TikTok. However, a year later, on around the 31st of October 2022, the account was banned from the app for reasons unknown. The account, before its removal, had managed to gain almost 300,000 followers. It was speculated that the reason that the account was removed was for impersonation, because the TikTok account wasn't actually run by the woman in the videos. Essentially, the videos posted to the TikTok account were actually from a popular account on Douyin, TikTok's Chinese counterpart. It is alleged that when the Chinese account would post a video walking skinnily around skyscrapers, the TikTok account would re-upload them to TikTok. The original account on Douyin currently has 3 million followers and over 25 million likes. But back on TikTok, having gained popularity and gained a meme status for walking sideways, many Jaffe parody accounts began to use the videos of Jay Momo in their Jaffe memes and turned this woman into the human embodiment of Jaffe, because up until then, Jaffe only existed from the neck up. Jay Momo was used in memes showing Jaffe coming to kidnap people and take them to the haunted house, as well as to show Jaffe dancing to the Jaffe remixes. And despite there being so many TikToks referring to Jay Momo as Jaffe, some users comment on these posts and correct them, explaining that the woman walking is not Jaffe and is instead Jay Momo. This has caused some friction between owners of Jaffe accounts, with some feeling that for meme purposes, Jay Momo should be considered the same entity as Jaffe, with many referencing biblical symbolism in their justifications and saying that they need a physical body to use for Jaffe memes, whereas some people feel that Jay Momo deserves recognition of her own and find that the two being conflated is offensive, which I'll come back to later in the video. And beyond Jay Momo, the TikTok memers went on to create several different versions of Jaffe using more than just Jay Momo. 
Jaffe Mimas, in fabricating law for the fictional entity, created the character Mayfe, Jaffe's sister. TikToks about Mayfe being Jaffe's sister began to take off in late 2022 and is considered to be a new gen Jaffe meme, made by people who joined in on the Jaffe trend later in the meme's life. I explain about the old gen v new gen stuff later in the video. That's if you still asked. The memes made of Mayfe used videos of a woman showcasing different fashion items, such as these impressively stretchy trousers. These videos were obviously not of Mayfe, because like Jaffe, Mayfe doesn't exist. Instead, these clips are apparently of a woman named Nami, and the videos of her were found on this TikTok page here, which is used to advertise clothing. The account had previously gained a lot of attention when two TikToks that were posted in late September and early October went viral, gaining 11 and 3 million views respectively. And interestingly, both TikToks were stretchy pants related. Told you they were impressive. People then took these videos and began to claim that the woman in these videos was Jaife's sister, Maife, and turned her into a Jaife adjacent meme, even giving her her own scream. <laughs> Many other iterations of Jaffe have also been created recently, including Befe, Potato Fe, and Watermelon Fe, among many, many others. These characters, although controversial, appear in various different communities on TikTok, such as FlopTok and FlopTropica. In March 2022, there began to be a surge of TikTok accounts posting TikToks with the hashtag FlopTok. FlopTok is a TikTok community that posts low quality videos or memes of a similar genre. The FlopTok community is often compared to Stan Twitter due to its styles of memes and because it uses several reoccurring characters, people or memes in their posts, over and over again. I do intend to do a whole video on FlopTok and FlopTropica where I discuss the memes and its origins in depth so I'll keep it light here, and be on the lookout for that video, which will no doubt be posted in about two to three business years, given the rate of my current uploads. Anyways, some of the people that frequently appear in FlopTok memes are Cupcake, I Justine, Kris Jenner, Trisha Paytas, Pooja, and, you guessed it, Jaffe, the product's queen. Described as one of the founding mothers of FlopTok, Jaffe is one of the largest memes on FlopTok, and FlopTok users frequently use the skyscraper sidestepping Jamo Mo in their memes. Memes. FlopTok, as it expanded, created a fake country as part of the meme called FlopTropica. On FlopTok, users frequently create videos adding to the history and geography of FlopTropica by creating stories about the people commonly used as memes in FlopTok videos, Jaffe being one. A lot of the fake history and geography of FlopTropica is muddled, as there are so many different users creating the island's fake law simultaneously, leading to multiple contradictions and overlaps, which I think just sort of adds to the flop talk experience. In regard to Jaffe's flop tropica involvement, according to the official flop tropica website, yes, there is an official flop tropica website, Jaffe lives on Jaffe Island, which is part of the flop tropica country, and some sources suggest that Jaffe is the vice president of the isle alongside President Deborah, a TikTok famous funeral director. Don't ask. Jaffe Island is also known as the hub of products for flop tropica due to Jaffe's product meme legacy. Jaffe is spotted buying products in Flopmart, Floptropica. And yes, once again, this is a video of Jay Mo Mo that was first uploaded to Douyin. And in a similar vein to the Floptropica memes is the Badusi War. My personal favourite TikTok sub community, the Badusi War is a fictional war created by TikTokers that began to gain popularity in late 2021, early 2022. Badusi Warers post black and white videos as if they are clips from a long time ago and claim that it is lost or unseen footage from the Badassi War, a fictional conflict. Like the Floptropica memes, these clips include a number of people like Kris Jenner, Wendy Williams, Nicki Minaj, Trisha Paytas, and, of course, Jaffe. These videos are posted with fake war-related captions, and the people in them are usually considered to be generals, sergeants, and soldiers of the war. For example, Jaffe's army arrive into the battlefield. General Wendy Williams C. Wendussi, she sacrificed herself to save the people. The year 2000 
2,420. Dad, someone named Jaife just passed away in the Badassie War. Me, a veteran from the Badassie War. The TikToks often use the song Pluto Projector by Rex Orange County, which was a popular song on the app, to heighten the emotional ambience of the video. According to the videos, the fictional war took place in the early 1900s. Well, at least the first one did. And the war is being fought against Da Boys, a group of young men who hate women, use words like Alpha and Sigma unironically, and are obsessed with a certain bald man best known for appearing in season 17 of Big Brother UK and being removed from the house. The Badussie war memes also include Mayfay, Jaife's alleged sister, with some TikToks suggesting she is a spy for Du Bois in the war, and flop talkers captioned videos of Nami pretending it was Mayfay getting interrogated about her connections with Du Bois. Since the creation of Flop Tropica and the Badussie war, with both memes having similar elements, both have sort of merged with some claiming that the Badussie war took place in Flop Tropica, where Jaife and Co fought against the invading Du Bois army, and have lost many fictional Flop Tropican troops in the process. I am planning on doing a much more in-depth video on the Badassie War meme, but you can't wait for that one after this monstrosity, so that was just a brief overview to highlight Jaife's involvement in the meme. Beyond the Badassie War, Jaife is also a key component slash meme in the world of Pataxi. Pataxi is a Latin American subculture on TikTok that is very similar to Flop Talk, but the TikToks are mainly created by and for a Spanish speaking audience. The name Pataxi came from a viral video of a woman from the Dominican Republic being asked about avocados, to which she says is Potasio. 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 El aguacate es potasio. The interview posted on YouTube by the channel El Chico Sandy has gained over 10 million views and formed the basis of the name for a new Flop Talk s community pataxi as a mispronunciation of the spanish word for potassium potasio like with flop talk and flop tropica according to its law the pataxi community live on planet pataxi which has its own flag and their queen slash god is jaffe although there are other similar faces that appear in the memes a lot of these pataxi memes are also avocado based given the origin of the meme similar to the badassie war the pataxis led by jaffe are fighting the fifes who are straight football loving men who worship a different different meme called Super Idol, to which some TikToks allege is Jaffe's brother. The Pataxi community began to take off at the end of 2021, and as of today, the hashtag Pataxi has amassed over 1 billion views, and the similar hashtag, Pataxi, but with an avocado face next to it, has gained over 6 billion. And with Jaffe being so popular and widespread on the app, having both English and Spanish speaking fans, the meme has slowly made its way onto the For You page of an entire new generation of TikTokers that has led to a whole new wave of memes and also a kind of Jaffe civil war. Early on in researching for this video, it became clear to me that there is some friction or conflict in the Jaffe TikTok world, and no, it's not the Badussie war. This is instead a real conflict between the old generation Jaffe memers and the new generation. As Jaffe grew on the app, more and more people who were not familiar with Jaffe soon became familiar with her product selling ways and decided to join her on her road to flop talk and TikTok domination. These people were new gens. One aspect of the Jaffe Jaffe meme that is commonly attributed to the new gens and is considered a new gen meme is the different versions of Jaffe, like Mefe and Befe. And these different versions of Jaffe is an area that garners a lot of criticism from old gens. Allegedly, when Mefe was introduced to Flop Talk, new gens claimed that Mefe was going to save Flop Talk, presumably by creating fresh memes for the community. However, many old gen members expressed their dislike for the meme and said that Flop Talk didn't need saving and was fine as it was was, with the flop talk icons it already had. Are these even words anymore? And with the rise of these new gen memes, some old gen users began to feel like they wanted to quit flop talk and accused the new gens of ruining the TikTok subgroup. You old gen flops are embarrassing. You're seriously gonna let all these new gens ruin a community that we spent three years building together since 2020? Puka and Mefe and Befe are new gen humour. We cannot let these new gens turn us into stan twitter or deep talk. We need to go to war. See you there, flops. And war, they did go too. Is that a sentence? A civil war broke out on flop talk between the new gens and the old gens, as the old gens fought to reclaim flop talk. 
Flop talk is officially in a civil war. New gens versus old gens. I don't post but I'm rooting for the old gens. I've been watching from the sidelines since the beginning and you guys can do this. Do the new gens actually think they can win the flop talk civil war? Girl, you are a new gen. And some flops who just wanted to avoid the war and the new gens completely considered migrating to join the pataxis. One of the key issues that the old gens had with the new gens warranting this online conflict was that they believed that the new gen memes such as Mayfair were racist. The worst new gen flop trends, the Mayfair trend, a racist Jaifair wannabe trend. And although these accusations of racism were made by the old gen regarding the new gen of Jaifair memers, the Jaifair meme as a whole has frequently been criticised as racist since the meme first began. When the Jaifair meme first gained infamy on the app, criticisms were raised about the meme with some critics feeling that the Jaifair meme was racist. It was expressed that many of the TikToks posted parodying the bot product advertisements were racist as the people making them were using what critics referred to as broken English and people began to share TikToks featuring the return of Charlie D'Amelio backup dancing videos and argued that the memes were mocking Asian people. Criticisms were raised of the many accounts that refer to Asian women who are not Jaffe, like Jay Momo and Mossy Man, as if they are the same person, and use them all interchangeably in the memes. And as a bit of a side note, the Jaffe scream was also accused of being overstimulating. Despite the accusations, there are, however, many Jaffe worshippers that refute that the memes are racist. Y'all found it funny a month ago, now you don't. Literally, every trend gets cancelled, I swear to God. I'm Chinese and I'm not even offended by Jaffe. In fact, I find it hilarious and literally Jaffe is just a joke. And although there has been some pushback from the Jaffe memers against the claims of racism, there have been some who were once Jaffe supporters before then switching sides. Okay, so now we are addressing how the Jaffe thing is racist. Like it was racist from the start, but we found it so funny we didn't realise. Who's we? I do care. There have also been many members of the Flop Talk community who rebut the blanket racism allegations, claiming instead that it is only a certain group of Flop Talk posters usually the new gen, that are being racist with the Jaffe videos. How these new gens feel after making flop talk problematic by calling every Asian lady they see Jaffe and making a new icon every week. There appears to have been no definitive decision made on whether the Jaffe memes are on the whole racist or whether it's just aspects of it or some of the people that are involved. And despite the controversial nature of the meme, Jaffe has become an almost TikTok cultural phenomenon and is slowly becoming one of the longest running memes on the app, with TikTokers constantly reinventing the meme and creating fresh aspects to it, thanks to the very, very dedicated subcultures that continue to develop the Jaffe universe, with their immense world-building skills that have George R. R. Martin rethinking his career path. A special thank you to the Jaffe subreddit for helping me with researching this video, especially Abyssal Mob and Tadus047. Also, be sure to comment below if you've noticed I've made a mistake or missed an important Jaffe detail. Jaffe is definitely a confusing TikTok entity and I hope I've done it justice. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one in the future.